Hello, boys and girls. My name is Nanny Rosebud, and I tell stories. Have you ever told a story? Did you ever get into trouble for telling a story? The secret to not getting into trouble is to always make sure that your listener knows whether you're telling the truth or it's make-believe. I promise to always tell you whether I'm telling you a make-believe story or not. Well, there's all kinds of stories and I love to tell them all. There's fables and fairy tales, folk tales and legends and myths. A fable usually includes stories about animals that can walk and talk, so you know right off the bat it's make-believe. But what's special about a fable is that it will have a lesson called a moral. The moral is something that teaches you good from bad, right from wrong, wise from foolish. That's very like a parable. A parable usually has an earthly story with a spiritual message. Then there are fairy tales. They usually have fairies in them and princes and princesses and it always has a happy ending. Folk tales don't have princes and princesses in them, and they don't always have a happy ending, but they usually have a lesson to learn, and they're about regular folks, and sometimes they're very funny. Then there are legends. Legends start out with true stories about true things that really happened in history. They're real people. Sometimes over time, the legends get bigger and bigger, so they seem almost too good to be real. But they always started out with something and someone true. And then on the other hand, there are myths. Myths have been around for thousands of years. Myths are stories about magical creatures that aren't real and people with supernatural, superhuman powers and abilities they're not real either, but they're very interesting because they often tell the story of why a certain culture or a certain country believed the things that they do. Well, fables are really fun to tell, and when I tell you a fable, I want you to try to guess what the moral is, and after I'm done telling you the fable, I will tell you what the moral is, and we will see if you were close or you got it right. It's okay if you were just close, and sometimes there's more than one lesson to be learned in a fable. Well, one of the most famous fabulists around that anybody has ever heard of was a man who lived 600 years BC, and his name was Aesop. Now, his name is spelled A-E-S-O-P, but the A is silent, so we pronounce it Aesop. One story that I like to tell about Aesop that he told was the story of the bear and the bees. One day, a bear went walking through the woods to look for berries to eat. He usually could sniff them out with his fine nose. As he was walking along, he smelled something really sweet, but it wasn't berries. That's honey I smell, he thought. And sure enough, he, his nose led him all the way to a fallen hollow log on the ground. Just to be sure, he went sniffing around very carefully because where there is honey, there are often bees because bees make honey. And in from the field came a little bee buzzing in and it flew into the hollow log. Sure enough, that's where it was. Well, he began to sniff around a little more. If he could jostle, maybe that bee would fly out. Well, 
Sure enough, that bee stung him right on the nose. He was so angry, he began growling and roaring and clawing and pawing, and he pawed at that log and rolled it around, and all of a sudden, thousands of bees came out of the hive in the log and started stinging the bear all over till he had to run and run and run as far as he could to outrun the swarm of bees, and he only could be saved by jumping into the river until just his sore little nose stuck out. Did you like that story? Do you know what the moral is? The moral of the story is it's better to suffer one little sting in silence than to provoke a thousand stings by your rage. Another story is the story of the cat, the mouse, and the rooster. Once there was a little mouse who had never been out into the world and decided it was time he'd grown up enough and he asked his mother's permission to go out into the neighborhood and look around. They lived on a farm. As he went out into the farmyard, he saw two strange creatures. The first one was so frightening, it looked like it had a piece of meat tied around its neck right here, and it looked like it had a piece of meat on the top of his head. And when he looked at it in fright, this creature looked at him and opened a pointy mouth and began to let out a terrible scream. The little mouse ran as fast as he could to run back to his mother for safety. On the way, he saw the most gentle, most kind-looking, soft and pretty-looking creature. It had fur, and it was so soft and pretty, and it had such gentle eyes. And when he stopped and looked at that creature, the creature waved its long tail and began to flick it like a hello. But he couldn't stop to say hello because that awful dreadful creature with the meat around his neck and the meat on his head let out that awful screech again and off he ran before he could say another word to the soft gentle creature off to tell his mother what had happened. Out of breath, he reached the mouse hole and went inside where his mother was, barely able to tell her what had happened. Oh, foolish son, she said. That horrible creature would not have hurt you. That wasn't meat around his neck. That wasn't meat on his head. His pointy mouth wasn't letting out a screech to terrorize you. That was just the rooster saying hello, and he wouldn't have hurt you at all. But that gentle little creature that you wanted to stop to talk to, that's the one you should beware of, for that was the cat, and cats like to eat mice. Do you know what the moral of that story is? The moral of that story is, don't always trust what you see. What you see might not be what you think it is. Now there's one more story I'd like to tell you, and that is the story of the mouse and the weasel. Now this may not have been the same little mouse, it could have been his brother. But one little mouse went out one day to look for something to eat. He was very, very hungry, and he knew that near the barn was a large basket, and in that basket was corn, and this little mouse wanted nothing more than to get into that basket and eat some corn. Well, he finally creeped up it. No creature was around, not even the farmer's cat. And he began to chew on the basket. And he made a little tiny hole 
stuck his nose in. It wasn't quite big enough, so he made it a little bigger, and he stuck his nose in again, and it was big enough to get his head in, but he had to make it just a little bit bigger to fit his shoulders, and he knew if he could get his shoulders through, then the rest of him could go through too, because he was very hungry and determined. He finally got in and began to enjoy the most delicious corn he'd ever tasted. And he ate and he ate and he couldn't stop himself from eating. Finally, he was so full, he didn't think he could eat another kernel. And he decided it was time to make his escape before the farmer's cat came along and found him. Or the farmer himself, which was even worse. So he stuck his head through the hole, and he got his shoulders through. But as he got his shoulders through, he discovered his belly had grown bigger than his shoulders, and he was stuck. Along came a weasel. Looking at the little mouse, he said, Tisk, tisk, tisk. You'll have to stay there until you are as hungry as you were when you first went in. Do you know the moral of that story? The moral of that story is be careful of your greed because it can get you into trouble. I hope you liked those fables, boys and girls, and you can tell fables too. In fact, you might be able to look at some things in your own everyday life and find a moral in it, a story that tells you the difference between good and bad, right and wrong, wise and foolish. And then you could tell that story just like Aesop did. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls, and remember to share the stories.